Hey, welcome back to another episode of Camp and Camera. Today, we're gonna to be installing the tongue box and its electrical components. Hey, welcome back everyone. If this is your first time here, thank you for clicking on the video um, where I'm building the Camp Easy 5945 teardrop. If you're a repeat watcher, it's good to have you back. Today, we're gonna to be putting the tongue box on the front of the camper with a couple power systems. We're gonna do a 12 volt power system and a 110 volt. Um, you probably expected the 12 volt. The 12 volt is gonna be powered off of a marine battery. I'm using one of those just because I happen to have one laying around. Um, I may upgrade to an AGM or lithium at some point in the future. Um, but on the 12 volt, I've got a couple components that I'm going to put in. One is this battery disconnect switch. Oh my goodness, there's a ton of differing opinions on the internet about whether this should go on the positive terminal of the battery or if it should come off of the negative terminal of the battery. And I mean, there's some pretty strong opinions out there too. Um, Matter of fact, if you've got some experiences, put those in the comment section below. I'd love to read those. But here in a moment, I'll show you what I did with this camper. I'm also gonna put in a 12 volt, 30 amp fuse. So if I have a problem with the camper, the fuse will burn out instead of the camper itself burning down. And on the 110 side of it, I'm gonna put in a 110 exterior waterproof outlet. Um, on the outside of the tongue box so that if I'm not truly boondocking off the marine battery, if I'm plugged into like a generator or shore power, I've just got another place I can plug something in. So, hey, remember to like and subscribe at the end of the video and let's get started. So let's do a quick review of the wires that I'm going to have to deal with. Um, I have a couple six gauge wires that are coming from the WFCO power panel in the bedroom. Um, when I want to boondock um, or run off the battery power, these wires will deliver the power to the WFCO panel. Um, I also have coming from the roof, I have two um, smaller, I think these are 10 gauge wires that will power um, or draw power from solar panels if I ever decide to put solar panels on the roof. Those will have to come into the tongue box as well. And then finally I have a 110, or I guess some people call it a 120, um, Romex uh, gonna be coming into the tongue box for the, for the uh, power outlet. All right, so the big question, am I gonna install the kill switch on the positive side of the battery or the negative side of the battery? Well, here's a little bit of a hint. I found this black plastic box laying around the workshop, uh, wasn't being used for anything. I cut the bottom of it out and I'm gonna install this under the frame up near the tongue. So that will, I don't wanna say encapsulate, but it will put a shield around both lugs on this kill switch. So with that, can you guess where I'm gonna go? That's right, I'm gonna to go to the positive side of the battery. And how I determine that is I've got a full-size camper, I've got a Rockwood Mini Light. I just basically went out and looked at it and that's what they did. They put a plate on the tongue with a, actually this very same kill switch going to it and they put it going to the positive side of the battery. So I'm just gonna be a copycat and do what they did. So although I didn't show it, um, I drilled four holes through this box and just took some little aluminum strips that I had to make like one big long washer for the bottom and for the top. And I just secured this switch with four pop rivets. Um, and it actually makes the box quite a bit more rigid. And now I'm gonna brush some of this liquid electric tape um, over these washers, probably don't need to, but I, I feel better about it. So I'm just gonna brush that over there and let that dry. So you may be thinking, why is he building all that stuff instead of just going out and buying it? Um, I mean, there certainly are items available on eBay, Amazon, you know, Lowe's and Home Depot that would serve the same purpose as the items that I'm building. But I enjoy it. That's just part of the fun. I mean, it saves me a little bit of money too, using junk that I have laying around the shop. 
but finding a new purpose for something that I'm not using otherwise, as long as it looks good. Now, I want it to look good. Um, but I just enjoy that. I enjoy using my hands and making things, and it just, I don't know, it's just satisfying. So the next step is to cut a piece of plywood for the inside of the tongue box to set on the bottom just to add a little extra support for the heavy marine battery. It's a plastic tongue box, and I just don't know how well it would support the weight on its own, so I think this is gonna help it out a little bit. I just drew the outline, or traced the outline of the tongue box on the plywood, so now I'll cut that out. All right, we're back in the workshop. I pulled, I, I don't want to say an all-nighter, but I was up working on the camper till about midnight last night. It's a work night. I had to get up early the next morning, and uh, <laughs> I'm a little beat. Plan on working on the camper this evening, <clears throat> seeing what I can knock out, and uh, look forward to it. But I am tired. I'm feeling it. I'm hoping this is a, this is a Tuesday uh, evening. I'm really hoping to get this thing ready to go um, to be able to pull it out of the workshop this Saturday. So I've got a four-day crunch ahead of me and be putting a lot of hours in trying to uh, tie up some loose ends. So let's get to working on this thing. Before I uh, permanently mount the tongue box, I'm going to install this. Uh, this is a Fastway Zip brand um, breakaway brake activator. So basically, <clears throat> this little hook will attach to the back of the tow vehicle. Um, this little switch will be bolted to the tongue and the wires, uh, there's two wires coming out of it. One will go to the battery and the other will go to the brake system. So if the trailer becomes disconnected from the tow vehicle, the onboard battery in the trailer um, will automatically engage the brakes and hopefully stop the trailer and keep it from going into another lane of traffic. Um, I'm just going to install this on the side of the tongue towards the top and hopefully um, I can get it high enough to where this little springy uh, cord um, will be higher than the trailer hitch itself so it won't interfere with the action of the trailer hitch. So let's get that put on. So if you notice, I didn't crank it down really hard. I was still able to move it a little bit by hand, and I just did that by the instructions. It said uh, not to over tighten the nut, so that's what I did. Uh, but yeah, that, that looked pretty good. So now I'll run the wires to the battery and to the uh, camper connection. So this is the battery disconnect switch. I'm going to, I was going to put this on the bottom of the frame of the camper. I'm thinking I'm going to screw this to the bottom of the tongue box. Um, anyway, this switch is removable and I don't want it to fall out while the camper is going down the road. So there's a little eye in there. I found a piece of cable lying around in the shop and I'm just going to take one of these um, electrical connectors, one of these little eyelet terminals. Um, I'm just going to crimp that down on the wire and make something to uh, 
to screw it to the bottom of the tongue box with so that way if the switch falls out it won't fall off so you see i have a blue outlet box here in the corner and i just ran a piece of 12 gauge romex to it and i put one of those um, metal grommets like you'd put in a in a uh, breaker box or, or fuse box um, just to keep the wire from chafing on the tongue box Okay, so we have the 110 outlet installed in the tongue box. So now when we're hooked into shore power or running off a generator, um, I'll be able to use this outlet to uh, probably charge some airplane batteries. Hopefully I'll use the camper to pull around to some of the fly-ins and it'd be nice to be able to set my battery charger on top of the tongue box with a few batteries and be able to plug into the 110 outlet. Um, oh, one of the subscribers to the channel, uh, Mark Hegman, asked me a question the other day. Um, when you do something on your videos and you say, okay, let's try and see if it works, have you already tried it or is that really the first time? Well, Mark, this will be the first time. I'm going to try this outlet. Let's see how it goes. I've got a rotary tool. If it doesn't shock me or explode, I think it's going to be okay. Mark? That was for you. Okay, the tongue box is wired in. Um, and I wired a light into the lid. I found that I had an extra dome light. Um, so I know it's going to work because I just, you know, plug it straight to the battery. But anyway, I got a dome light, so I'll be able to see in the tongue box. Um, and I can flip this lid up and use it to shine on the back of the vehicle if I'm having to hook or unhook the hitch at night time. All right, so let's talk about what I did. The, um, the hot wire coming from the camper I just ran it straight to the positive post of the battery and I found I'm gonna call it an accessory terminal at a local parts store that also screws directly onto the hot post and the charge wire which is this little red wire here that comes from the um, seven lug um, distribution box on the front of the camper you if you watched a previous video you would see where I wired it up it will charge the battery from the alternator of the vehicle while it's going down the road this black wire and I wish wish it was red but this black wire is the wire coming from the breakaway switch they'll activate the trailer brakes and then of course this is just the wire going to the little light that I just put in um, coming off of the battery it goes into this 30 amp fuse and then from there, it'll go down to the uh, cutoff switch, which is underneath the tongue box. Now, the wires that you see coiled up, those are wires that I'm going to use in the future um, to tap into solar panels that I plan to put on the roof. And the wires go from the tongue box all the way up to the roof, and they're just coiled up inside the vent fan for right now. So, but anyway, it's you know just there for future plans. And on the other side, here's the 110 outlet um so yeah and i still got a lot of room left in the tongue box so let me show you the switch okay just shining a flashlight on it here's the cutoff switch and basically you have one red wire coming from the uh the fuse in the tongue box and the other red wire um goes back to the camper so this is um actually the same cutoff switch that forest river used on my uh, rockwood mini light camper I thought that was pretty cool. So let's just give it a try. We'll have to move the flashlight around here just a little bit. Here we go. All right. I am not plugged into shore power. As you can see, that's my shore power plug. And it's not doing anything. Um, I have a porch light on. I have my interior lights on. See how well the Fantastic or the max fan works yeah 
everything's working great so everything is working great um, with the uh, power disconnect turned on and the uh, power distribution panel plugged into shore power I had 13 and a half volts checked at the battery and then when I cut the cutoff switch off I had 13.2 so that tells me that the power panel is charging the battery so that worked out great um, so yeah we're getting real close to having this thing out of the shop um, now that this is done uh, there's a couple pieces of aluminum trim I need to put on the sides on the bottom and I need to run some trim pro caulk on a few seams on the roof just for some extra protection so probably like two more days of workshop time and I should be pulling this thing out um, I know several people have asked am I really gonna be able to get this big camper out of the small door I don't know may have to cut the roof of the door out we'll see I plan on videotaping it though that'll be a good episode so hey if you like this one give it a thumbs up that really helps the channel and until next time take care we'll see you on the road